thought about it a little more and like I'm almost positive that I'm gonna quit YouTube. He said the day he graduated college would be the last YouTube video he ever uploads. Yesterday YouTube lost one of its most interesting channels, Unis Honest. After much contemplation, I've made the decision to step away from YouTube. YouTubers quit. It's a natural part of this website's life cycle. A YouTuber stops making content and another creator takes their place. However, there are a lot of ways to get out the door. Some creators are forced off the platform after being barraged by cancel culture. Or a lot of creators quit silently because they never got a chance to take off in the first place. Maybe life got in the way, or they got burnt out. But there's one way out the door that particularly interests me. A phenomenon I call the Doomsday Channel. A doomsday channel, or at least my made-up definition of this concept, is a channel that is set to end at a certain date by its own creator, usually accompanied by a countdown that signals its demise. The first question that comes up is probably, why would anyone forcefully kill their channel? Well, you wouldn't be wrong in that respect. Putting an artificial end to a successful YouTube channel is extremely unorthodox. After all, the goals of being a content creator is oftentimes one, get as much ad revenue and views as possible, and two, share topics you're passionate about with strangers across the internet. The Doomsday Channel goes against both of these ideologies, because despite the media attention that a Doomsday Channel gets, eventually the creator won't be able to accomplish either of those things after their channel is gone. With that in mind, why would a creator want to do this to their channel? To go against everything that the general public believes making successful content stands for? Well, I'll get to that. But first things first, let me talk about my main culprits. Anthpo is a creator that uploaded his first video on January 31st, 2019, about four years ago. His channel formally came to an end on May 14th, 2023, signing off with an emotionally charged goodbye video that got millions of views. While far from a doomsday channel initially, Anthpo decided to start his clock two years before his graduation at the end of a funny little beach video. Anthony would start putting the number of days left until his graduation at the end of each one of his videos, the count starting unremarkably high but slowly decreasing with each video he released. Anthpo framed his doomsday channel with his graduation date, warning his audience early on that once he was out of college, his content would come to an end. Unis Honest was a pretty on-the-nose doomsday channel that was created solely to come to an end. Ever since its conception, YouTubers Markiplier and Crank Gameplays formally, and rather handsomely, announced that the channel would serve to make as many memories as possible for its two creators until its time ran out. Unis Honest, or One Year, was a grand experiment that put the two hosts to the gauntlet. The two would end up doing some egregious tasks with the channel, ranging from getting voluntarily pepper sprayed to running a military course with James Charles. With each video starting off with an ominous timer that would slowly decrease day by day, Unis Honest constantly reminded its viewers of its inevitable demise. Eventually, Unis Honest's day would come, and the two hosts sent off the channel with one final goodbye livestream before permanently and poetically wiping every single one of their videos from the internet. You probably noticed that quitting has become a very sudden and spooky thing that's been happening lately. So while there are many culprits, I'll be focusing mainly on these two, and I'll mention some others along the way. But to start, the phrase I hear the most from people is, why would they quit at the peak of their career? Like I previously said, it just doesn't make any sense. So let's make this the main focus. The way that I see the Doomsday Channel is a final assault to release that pent up creative energy and create something amazing. We love a good challenge. Who doesn't? especially when it's about what we love to do. The one thing these two creators have in common is how they've challenged themselves. Anthpo forced himself to post consistently for two years, going out and bringing ideas to fruition during his time limit. Unis Honest had to post consistently for a year, and their videos weren't very easy to make. Seth Everman gave himself a whole year to finally challenge his whack-ass upload schedule. I have 365 days to make all the videos I never managed to make over the years because he struggled to produce content otherwise. These YouTubers took it upon themselves to give their audiences the best, and that ticking clock has to be a great motivator, right? Once their time runs out, the creators know that there's no going back. They need to use the creativity and ideas they struggled with and finally bring them to life. In my opinion, Anthwell's content during his final days has to be some of the best I've seen on this site. The raw dedication, ambition, and creativity that he brought to his videos was unmatched. Would he have done some of the stuff he did if he never started his countdown? That's up in the air. But if you ask me, Probably not. Anthony even alluded to this himself in his own content, repeatedly reminding his fan base that he's doing this to make cherished memories he can look back on for years to come. Unis Honest followed this same mentality, even though they set out to make it really difficult to look back on the videos. But in Anthpo's case, his pressure to create content would creep up on him, eventually culminating in a very different content style from the videos he originally set out to make. When the day counter was still high, his videos were lighthearted, wholesome, and downright entertaining. But the closer we got to the end, the more personal the videos became. You know, I don't know how much longer I can do this stupid YouTube thing, man. Maybe I'm just not in the right space. 
Oh man, it's tough. It's so tough, bro. You have no idea. I just need like change in my life. For the longest time, I've all I've known is like waking up, stressing about YouTube, and then going to sleep. And I love it, and I wouldn't do it if I didn't love it, but I want to explore what else life has to offer. And I feel like it would be a real shame if I buckled down and tried this YouTube thing for longer. You know, while these events were unfolding, it was pretty clear to me and the rest of his fans that Anthony was struggling. I suppose I could never really know how Anthony was truly feeling because I'm just a random Joe Schmo on the internet, but it's safe to say that Anthony couldn't do this forever and his mental health was taking a toll from the pressure to keep creating and other life factors. But you guys have probably noticed on YouTube by now that Anthpo is certainly not the only one dealing with these issues. Watching numerous other quitting videos, you'll see that these creators are genuinely doing this for reasons similar to Anthony's. The Doomsday Channel is a challenge that pushes the creator to their limits, but it's a different one. Starting the countdown is not the problem, it's the solution. The lifespan of a creator is often varied and unpredictable. Some YouTubers stick around for years and continue making videos they like, and some YouTubers might just jump ship altogether and go to another site. At the end of the day, creating content is an extremely exhaustive and laborious task. Making videos that are able to stand the test of time consistently requires immense amounts of effort, as you probably know, but the foundation of being a creator is becoming someone who makes content forever. It's inherent. When you think about it, there's only really two ways to step away from a YouTube channel. You either just decide the day that you stop uploading, or you just keep uploading videos from now until the heat death of the universe. While this is a dream job for many, people often misconstrue the sheer amount of work that goes into a YouTube video, since we only really see the tidied up final product and never the behind the scenes. At ground zero, the creator doesn't have a normal job. <laughs> Far from it. They are responsible for all stages of the creative process. They are the writer, storyboarder, director, videographer, cinematographer, video editor, VFX artist, graphic designer, color grader, I could go on and on. And this is assuming that they don't hire on any help. Not only are they in charge of doing these jobs by themselves, but they also have to have a healthy mind. The way that I see it, a person's creativity can only go for so long. Creative work is unique. It's passionate. It requires not only the technical bits to be done, but also your soul. I like to think of it like a light bulb within yourself. The light bulb burns bright at the start, but the longer it burns, the more it'll fade until eventually the light bulb just doesn't work anymore. Abstract and silly, I know, but stay with me here. Creators that are retiring or outright quitting are basically changing their light bulb to one that burns bright again. YouTubers can hire help, but the more people a creator takes on to help out, the more liability there is. Up until a point, that isn't really a YouTube channel anymore. It's a f***ing business, and a business is a whole other deal that is way different than just wanting to make videos on YouTube. If you want to put this in perspective, look at Mr. Beast. It's hard to see him as just a creator or just some guy with some friends. That psychopath is running a full-on business. No, no, empire. His large-scale productions require an immense workload from all kinds of departments, and that's great. But I'm talking about the average John YouTuber here. A YouTuber that's feeling immense pressure to constantly push the boundary and stand out amongst an ocean that's ever-changing. A YouTuber that feels like they have to do so much more with so much less. Couple deadlines in your literal income to this unrealistic workload and you can definitely see why people are wanting to switch it up or start a doomsday channel. It directly challenges the endless content loop that YouTubers often find themselves in. It puts the creator's mind at ease knowing that the stress of having to plan out content years ahead isn't something to worry about anymore. Anthpo can rest easy knowing he doesn't have to worry about his next big idea and many YouTubers can take the hours they're getting back and reinvest them in a family. It's the final stand and a declaration that there is, in fact, an ending to this game called YouTube. There's just one more thing I want to say before I wrap this all up, and it's the only real negative part to all this, even though it's not really a negative, it's just like a byproduct. The idea of a creator ending their channel early on is fine. I mean, the creator probably just wants to do something cool on their way out and then move on with their life, but there's a heartbreaking truth to this. I mean, as humans, we don't like separation. We don't like to grow attached to something over a period of time and then get torn away from it. I'd imagine that's a given, but I just wanted to bring this up in regards to these channels. Have you ever been in a relationship? Have you gotten out of it and both of you decide to never speak again? It's strange because it's almost like they passed away to you, but they didn't pass. They're very much alive doing their own things in their own life. But it's the idea that to you, they're gone. This is a similar feeling that the Doomsday Channel creates. A feeling of dread that one day the creator and the channel will purposely and arbitrarily be torn away from you indefinitely. That in essence, the very concept of the channel will cease to exist, never to be contributed to again, and will only really live on through your memories of it. I just wanted to mention this because these channels can really become a part of ourselves. I mean, we grew up with them. 
they're nostalgic to us. And to see a creator leaving the platform after so long and their channels effectively dying out, it can hit pretty hard. The creators of Unis Honest though were pretty upfront about this, leading their videos with the tagline, Memento Mori, and creating annual funeral videos that honor the legacy of their now past YouTube channel. But maybe this is what Unis Honest was actually preparing us for. They were preparing us for a time when the creators quit and the audiences had to say goodbye. Anthpo and the guys and other YouTubers that are starting their doomsday channels don't allude to mourning the death of them, but rather mourning the death of an idea. An idea that once brought people together, and an idea that will eventually be lost to time. There you are, sitting somewhere, either on your toilet, in your chair, or on a bench, watching the final video. Your favorite YouTuber has just officially signed off, and as you sit through the last few seconds, you might feel a lot of different emotions. You look down in the comments and see hundreds of positive goodbyes echoing similar, yet differently worded, sentiments about the creator leaving the site. The clock has finally hit zero, and you're left staring at your device, wondering what to do with yourself. It's a sense of emptiness, maybe sadness. It could be there for a moment, or it might stick around in your stomach for days, maybe months after they're done. In your mind, from your perspective, this YouTuber you've known for so long is left potentially never returning the same way ever again. It's crazy to me that a person is able to evoke feelings like this, to take an audience's attachment to a random channel on YouTube and turn it into a grand emotional spectacle. It's nothing short of an amazing accomplishment, and it's super inspirational. But it still might not make sense. I mean, why couldn't Anthpo switch to a yearly upload schedule? Or why couldn't Una's Honest continue making the same challenging vlogs only every so often? Well, it should be obvious by now. It's just not the point. With life comes death, and with death comes legacy. These channels left or are leaving a legacy behind that is greater than the content itself. By starting the timer to the death of the channel, these YouTubers are able to formulate powerful messages in their videos that will eventually culminate in one grand, emotionally gut-wrenching finale. So, not only will a YouTuber be remembered by the content they've worked tirelessly to create, but also by the message they work to send to the world after they depart. So the next time a creator you know, or even your favorite creator, decides to start their clock, go ahead and be saddened, be angry, be in denial about their absence. But after they're gone, enjoy the art that they show to the world with their time left, and honor the legacy that they wanted to leave behind. You have to know when something is done. When you've done everything that can be done, and any more would start to be too much. When I pull up videos of all my favorite creators and I watch them and all of a sudden I start hearing people just casually dropping, that's just a theory. That right there, that is incredible. And that's the note that I want to leave on. Because I firmly believe that the entirety of what something is cannot be truly appreciated until it ends. Every day we put in the effort so that it would be so hard to say goodbye. And the harder it was, the better the content could be, and the more we put ourselves into it, the harder it would be to let go. And then we let go. Thank you all so much for sitting here and being part of my story. Now it's time to go live your life.